uh, to counsel people who already has sexual problems is very difficult because relationship and sex has so much attraction that I've seen cases everyone says this guy has problem <laughs> everyone tell the girl this guy has problem he goes after many girls he has relationship with many girls now he's asking you to have sex with her uh, with, with him and the girl will still not wake up maybe he says repentant now <laughs> He has repented now. He said he's repentant now. And he really loves me. And he want to have this have sexual relationship with me. Even like that, the woman will not wake up. When people are in a relationship, the force is so strong. Unless if the person really have a strong relationship with God and know that God is good and God can do the best for the life, they will not have the motivation and the power to get up. So that's one degree. One degree is when they are in a danger of going to have sex. The guy keep asking the girl to have sex. And the girl at this point is not willing, but the girl can give in any time. This is the first. Of course the best is that to teach to prevent that to happen. But even if you teach a lot, when the people come to that point, they will forget about it. They forget about it first because of the attraction of the relationship and also because the loneliness of people because they feel lonely. When there is someone, a lot of times people don't have love in the family, don't have much love. And then they find a guy or a girl who loves them and they say this is the best of the world and then they would hold on to that. And, and so when, no matter how much you have taught, when they come to dating, they forget about everything you have taught them. So that's why we need to have dating counseling to help them to face each day and the two persons together. Mm -hmm. And if, they're, if the person is dating a non-Christian, then yeah. of course we have to tell them ahead yeah. of time, this is going to destroy your Christian life. Mm -hmm. The person will pull you away from Jesus. Even if he doesn't pull you away from Jesus, he will pull you away from serving God. Mm -hmm. It will be very hard to serve God with a non-Christian spouse. Mm -hmm. yeah. And so that's the the first step to teach and then to counsel and then when they're dating you know that is very dangerous already that people just don't have the heart to say I want to follow God I want to glorify God in my life I don't want anything to destroy my life and it's very important too before marriage the relationship can always break down the reason is many you know because guys chase after girls fierce, fiercefully. They really chase out the girls with all the ways. Because girls and guys enter relationship for different reasons. The girls want relationship, want a long-term relationship, want a marriage, and a guy wants sexual relationship. So the guy would do anything to please the girl and to have the sexual relationship. So the guy would try the best. And the girl would think that the guy really loves her because the guy really has done so many things but she didn't realize that the guy do all this in order to have sex so they are saying that guys love in order to get sex and girls give sex in order to get love you say this hear this again guys gives love in order to get sex and girls give sex in order to get love so when it comes to that point, the person has to have a close relationship with God and believe his life is precious. So this has to be taught over and over again, that we all believe that our life is very precious and God will provide for each person in a different way. Now for some people, it will be marriage. For some people, it will be a single life. But people say, I don't want a single life. But if it's a blessed single life, the person can enjoy the single life. Okay. So when they start dating, we need to counsel, help them. Without counseling, most dating could go into sexual relationship. Okay, now they have entered sexual relationship. Then there can be all kinds of problems. One problem is the guy is no longer interested in the girl alone. <laughs> He's after other girls. That happens a lot. When they get the girl, 
they get the excitement already, they are satisfied already, and then the girls start to nag, because the girls start to say, when are we going to get married? Yeah. Uh, I, where, where are you? Why, why don't you stay with me? Where did you go yesterday? Immediately the, the girl try to hold on to the guy, and the guy feel controlled. Because girls are, and women are different. Girls are free, happy, and guys are like that. But once there is sexual relationship or once there is a marriage, then the woman want to hold on to the guy for security, for the relationship, and for marriage. And then the guy feels there is pressure. So that's why many marriages, once they get married, the relationship totally change. No longer the guy doesn't like to stay home with the wife. The guy wants to go after other girls. Because he said, the other girls are more free now. Once you get married, you, are, you become like my mother. Always <laughs> controlling me, asking me questions. And the same thing happens when there is sex. Then the girl is afraid the guy will, lo will, will leave him, leave her. And then the girl will continue holding the guy and the guy wants to leave. So then the, it's become very difficult. Okay, there can be a few results. First result, the guy has no interest at all. The guy has another girl, what can you do? <laughs> if this guy already has other girls and chase after other girls, we have to counsel the girl to give up this guy. Even though he's, he has, uh, they have sex or even though the girl might be pregnant. It's a big, big problem. Because if they get married, it will be a bigger problem. So this is the worst scenario. In the other scenario, the guy likes to stay with the girl, but the guy has many problems. Now the girl discovered, finally. Before the sexual relationship, she did not discover the problem. Now she discovered the problem. The guy doesn't listen, doesn't... When he chased after her, she, he listened. Because that's a task. To chase after the girl is a task. Now the task is done. It's done. The guy has no interest to listen anymore. You're too worthy. You talk too long. You say it over and over again. Why do you always have these feelings? Because girls have feelings, a lot of feelings. I mean, guys have feelings too, but guys usually like to suppress. So the guy said, you always talk about feelings. You don't have to think about the feelings. You just forget about it. Just have fun. <laughs> but girls just cannot. They want to talk about their feelings. They want to have everything straightened out. So this is something that needs to be taught to the guys and the girls about the difference between guys and girls. I actually have a document here. Oh, I don't know if I have it in English. Guys and girls are very different. Girls like to talk about feelings, like to talk about everything in the heart. Guys usually don't want to talk about things. They just want to have fun or do things by themselves. Guys usually don't like to talk about detail. So the, the woman have problem relating to the guy now. What can you do? Then you can suggest counseling to help them. But if the guy is a non-Christian, yeah. then it's very hard. Yeah. So again, the girl is eating the consequence of their sins. And what can you do? You try to save the soul of the woman. You try to save the person. But it's very difficult. She's facing so much difficulty. She'll forget about praying. She'll forget about serving God. A lot of things she'll forget. So we have to tell people ahead of time. Tell them. Before they have sex, the guy looks so attractive. Don't think that he's dressed up nicely, that he's a good husband. Don't think that the guys always give you flowers or say things nice to you, then he's a good husband. The girls have to understand this. And the guys have to understand, you want to be a good husband, you want to learn to listen. You want to learn to talk about things and handle problems together. If they, don't, they are not willing to do that, they cannot be a good husband. Then it's better to say, stay single. So there should be training on communication, listening, responding, all this you know, a package of training, a lot of training. Okay, now the next step is about, next is about the two person have relatively good relationship but already have sexual relationship. 
chip. Then what can you do? <coughs> now, if they both love God, I would suggest them to stop the sexual relationship so that they have a godly preparation for the marriage. They honor the marriage. They want to do the best preparation for the marriage uh, so that you know they are pleasing to God. Because you want blessing in a marriage, you want to please God. You don't please God, you don't get good marriage. And then after marriage, there will be problems come up. Come up. So that is my suggestion, to stop the sexual relationship. Don't date in a house. Date in public places so that you can communicate and talk. Spend more time talking, not hugging and kissing and fondling. But spend time talking and handling problems and, and uh, sharing about their life. If they are willing, then it's because they are godly. They are willing to follow. But at this point, it's very hard to turn back. So I'm telling you the three situations are all difficult. The best is before they have the sexual relationship, before they date, they already have learned all this. And all this they do because they love God, because they know God loves them, because they know that life is precious, therefore they want to follow God. Now, just now I talked about the problem with guys, because guys want to have sexual relationship. But now I want to talk, tell you a little bit about the problem with women. Now, girls are attractive because they're happy and they talk freely and they don't nag. But women have problems of, uh, many women do not have the problem of not being able to handle the emotions because no one has taught them. And they have a history of being hurt by people, negative feelings inside, some people, you know, you, you might think on the outside the person is attractive, but on the inside the person might be very hurt and very negative. And so you notice many women like to gossip, like to talk about negative things, because in the heart it's always looked. Women usually pay attention to little details. They notice a lot of things. When they notice this thing, they want to talk about it, so they gossip. And so after you, you marry a woman, you find that the woman always tell you, this is not done, that's not done now. This is, you should listen to them. But they will tell you different problems. They, they observe problems. It's actually a good thing. So you need to prepare yourself to listen to all these problems and handle the problems. If you are not ready to handle problems, don't date. Don't marry. Don't get married yet. You realize that with women, they will tell you problems day after day. Every day they will tell you problems they would notice different problems because they want good relationship you know that God has created women who desire good relationship who desire um, you know everyone is friendly and good and nice and loving they desire this kind of relationship but they don't find this so they complain and they also pay attention because they uh, God gives them the, response, uh, the sense of responsibility. So women, mothers usually remember how much food they have. And they remember the needs of the children. Fathers sometimes forget about which kid go to which school or where, <laughs> where, what they're studying. Uh, the food left in the school, uh, left in the house, how much, is there enough food? The husband generally forget little details like that. And so when men want to get married, they need to learn to Pay attention to these details and know that the girls will not stay as like girls when they get married. Yeah. When they get married, they become, you know, they nag a lot and they might be negative. So if a woman, a girl is very negative even when dating, you notice, you believe that one day she will be more negative. They have to learn to handle all this problem. Now because of the social problem in this country. I know that many people have depression, unhappy feelings, pressure. So many people actually have depression problem. So this is something we need to learn to handle ourselves and learn to teach the youth so that they learn to handle all this problem so that one day they become good uh, spouse. They can you know, get married and be good. 
So we have to, as guys, we have to realize that don't think that when women get married, they will be like the girls. They will, they may nag, they might be negative, they might get emotional, uh, they might, women usually pay attention to security very much. They want security, they want job security. So when you're serving God alone, single now, when you're single, you say, well, I'll depend on God. Next month, I'll get the money. Next month, I'll get the money. But when you get married, your wife will be very unhappy. This month, you don't know how much money you have next month. She'll be nagging you. She'll be very unhappy, complaining to you all the time. So you understand all this could happen. So as a minister, you want to look for the person God chose for you. And you look, want to look for people who are healthy emotionally spiritually, relationally, and you yourself too. You want to be a person healthy emotionally and relationally and spiritually. If you're not like that, you don't expect a good wife. And when you come across a woman that God prepared for you, you really want to treasure the person and treat her nicely and listen to her and communicate with her and care about her in every way. And as she will care about you and be your best support. Let me tell you, my wife is my best support. You notice, notice when I take pictures, we take pictures, our heads stick together. We always take pictures like that. We, sometimes we look at, each, look at each other, sometimes we stick together, that we're always caring for each other. And she's my best support. And I'm her best support. We love each other, we care for each other. But I haven't found many marriage like mine. I haven't found many marriage like that. So as ministers, you want a good life. Wait for God to prepare for you the best person. And then when that person shows up, take your time to understand her, to care about her, to love her. Like before I got married, I told my wife, if one day I marry you, actually long before I got married, if one day I marry you, every day I will smile at you, I will hug you, I will kiss you, I will make you happy, and I really do those things. Every day I make her happy. So if you want to get married, you want to prepare for that. And understand the difference between men and women. As men, it's very hard to understand the woman. Why are you so depressed? Why are you so unhappy? Why do you worry about those things? You, you don't understand. Because man has a tendency to for, forget about things. Take things easily. But women are, like, are not like that. Once you get married, you find that it's, you have to really... Uh, it's very difficult to live by faith. It's very difficult. Because she'll keep nagging you. She'll pressure you to find a job that is a steady job. To have an unsteady income for her is very... Un Unthinkable. Usually, that's the situation. Mm -hmm.